Well, Uncle Ned, we have been reading how to use your astral powers to people. And we're on chapter 9. And so far, um, 2,000 people saw the first one. And, um, yep. and they're really getting a lot out of it. You mm -hmm. and you too. Can we move on? That's <laughs> my uncle. Wish you don't want to be on the camera. <laughs> okay. So let's do page twenty nine together, y'all. Um. And remember to picture images as well as um words. Picture the images with the words. So continuing now and for days and years to come. I am moving towards my cherished goal. My life is becoming rich and happier. A better economic condition and full contentment. Every action, enterprise, or endeavor in which I wish to be involved is bringing increasing reward. Life is making its joys and happiness easier to come by. It's making its joys and happiness easier to come by. Good fortune is coming my way more and more frequently. Good fortune is always coming my way more and more frequently. I am learning how to share my good fortune by helping others along the way. I learned how to share my good fortune by helping others along the way. I am truly moving closer to the oneness with God. I'm truly moving Full release of my inner self. Full release of my inner self. Chapter 9. How astral power and astral helpers can build a protective psychic wall around you and solve many of the mysteries of life and otherwise. Thousands of years ago, all earth people functioned on all levels of consciousness. Recently, someone named Gene Dixon, the world famous psychic pred um, predicted that the time would come when the secrets of reincarnation, ESP, extrasensory perception will be known by everyone. She did not state when that time would be, but for the reader of, of my book, the time is now. The inhibitors, the inhibitation, the inhibitance of <laughs> the inhibitance of the spirit world cannot kid each other. Huh? Inhibitions or inhibitants. Okay. Thank you. When they come into each other's presence, they know all about the other person. They read each other's minds so completely that they do not ever have to talk. They just think. There are no con men in the spirit world. You do not need to go on living in the lower vibrations of frequencies of life. You can rise above the purely physical pleasures and the vulgarities of life. The great majority of people have returned to the earthly plane 30 or more times. The only way they can be certain as to why you return is to find out who you were in other lifetimes, and most important, why you came back or why you were sent back. This does not mean that you need to spend all your time learning the lessons of God-like behavior. You can learn to become prosperous. You can have your fill of physical pleasures of this life, including sex. But you can also develop character, personality, and really prepare yourself for a higher type of spiritual living. Most important for the future, you can develop the know that goes with the mature, well-guided life on earth. If you kept the light burning. Fortunately, after man largely lost his ability to live and love on all dimensions of the universe, a few brave souls carried the torch of true enlightenment through the ages. Although they were cursed and burned at the stake, put in a prison, called kooks, outlawed, laughed at, and even called the works of the devil, a few high souls kept the lights of spirituality glowing. Even just a few years ago, excellent physicists carried a heavy burden. One of my astral helpers, Hazel Shepherd, is a glowing example of what I have just tried to make clear to you. Early in her life, she had to make a choice, develop and use her psychic powers or what her husband considered a good wife and a mother. Hazel tried to do both. This resulted in great conflict within her home. 
Her husband claimed that he could not gain promotion to high-level managerial job because he was married to a kook. The steel company for which he worked would not promote him to a high-level job because executives needed to do a great deal of entertaining. They told him that Hazel was not an acceptable wife for the presence at their social events. The very distressed part of the true story is that both Hazel and her husband are now on the spirit side of life. But Hazel never sees her husband. He's still very resentful and does not see how wrong he was. Sooner or later, he will need to come to grips with this problem that he himself has created. Today, there are many still living who would not be living a successful life if it had not been for Hazel Shepherd. She is now a great help to me, as well as being a help to those who have passed in spirit. Very soon, she hopes to dictate the story of her earthly life to my wife. It will appear in book form with the lovely title of Peaceful Mission. Astral helpers keep trying to get through to you. I'm sure that many of you read the books and had the account of famous Fifth Avenue jewelry store that was left open on New Year's Eve. Robbers could have scooped up thousands of dollars worth of jewelry and walked out with the great of ease. Apparently, the security officers were so anxious to celebrate the New Year that they had forgotten to lock the front door. The president of this company was home trying to take a nap before going out onto the town of New Year's Eve. Every few minutes, he would awaken with a start and the thought, they left the front door open, would come into his mind. Not knowing, not knowing anything about astral helpers, this man brushed these thoughts off and did nothing about them. One would think after being awakened several times, he would have at least called to check it out. Finally, the police called the next day and told him what had happened. Astral helpers can build a protective wall around you if you let them. That is so deep. Because I remember when we had our store on Shaw Road and we were in Cleveland. And I kept on saying, somebody's at that window, Sylvia. Open up that. Somebody's at that window. We kept on getting them. I did that for a whole 15 minutes. And when we got back, our store had been broken into on the same day and the same time. Eric keeps on paying his insurance. Eric often wonders why he keeps on paying his insurance premiums on his home, his car, place of business, health, and accident policies. He often feels like saving all that money. Eric has never filed a claim and probably never will as long as he keeps his actual protection plan going. This plan does not cost a penny. The law answered part of this question. You are focused to pay insurance premiums on your automobile, your home in most cases, and your place of business. If you work for a company, it probably carries health and accident insurance for you. Many persons are now getting, even getting dental care insurance. I have paid out thousands of dollars in insurance premiums on 14 automobiles, four homes, hospitals, and health accidents, etc insurance and never collected a penny in fact i've never been in the hospital except to visit friends or relatives and know that i never will be confined to a hospital my answer to this question is to keep your insurance payments as low as possible at least you'll be able to help some poor soul who never read my book ask for protection every time you meditate it only takes a few moments to reinforce your astral protection security plan Ask for protection from your home, your automobiles, your property, your trips, as well as against robberies, assault, rape, being murdered by the police, um, health issues, and other criminal offenses. Always be certain that you thank your ancestral helpers for all the protection that they give you. They like to know that you are appreciate their help and that you are human in this respect. They like to hear you say thank you, dear one. Never command your astral helpers to do anything for you. All this does is keep your inferiority complex going. A simple request is all that you need. When making your request, make certain that you indicate complete confidence in their ability to help you. Above all, keep fear and all other negative emotions out of your mind. You must have complete faith that your astral protection plan will work. 
I don't know if I told y'all this, but one sister in New York, she had left her trunk open. She was riding with a gentleman and somebody had stole her purse. And she said she started dancing and praying. And the next morning, the guy brought her her purse and he was in tears. He said, I couldn't even open it. Yeah, sat by the car and waited for her. Everyone likes to play detective. Surely the thought has crossed your mind by now that the law enforcement agencies are greatly in need of astral helpers. The crime rate seems only to go up. The mistakes that the courts make are truly a disgrace. Did you ever stop to consider how many people are in prison today for crimes that they never even committed? Mm. Yeah, because our people are the ones that are plagued with that. I often wonder how many persons have been executed for crimes that they never committed. He received a fair trial, they say. There are also thousands of crimes or accidental happenings that go unsolved. A few personal experiences. I find that I just must stop and tell you a few personal experiences that indicate the great value of astral helpers. One Sunday, we visited the new Briarwood Shopping Center in Ann Harbor. It has over a hundred stores, including Hudson's Pennies and Sears, several restaurants, and two theaters. You can walk for miles in this place. After we had been in and out of many stores, we stopped for refreshments. When we arrived back home, my wife said, where are my glasses? I must have dropped them somewhere at Briarwood. I closed my eyes and called in on Norma Jean. I knew that she was with us for she loved to go shopping with us. Norma Jean said, call Hemlock. Mildred not only dropped her glasses at the store, but also her gloves. My wife has not yet missed her gloves, but when she called the store, they have found the glasses and the gloves. This may seem like a little thing to you, but what was the alternative? Call all the stores that we have been in, if we could remember them all, run back out to Briarwood, spend hours retracting our steps, and the problem was solved in minutes without worry or wasted energy. Some of you are thinking, why didn't Norma Jean call Mildred's attention to it when the glasses and gloves dropped? That's a great question. The answer is that we were both so interested in the physical side of life that we would have not heard her tell us they were lost. Now that's the truth. Because when our house flooded, the ancestors had told me two months before to get insurance, in which I had ended up getting insurance on the house in Detroit. And then I was fuddling around with getting the insurance um, on the house. And they were like, oh, well, we can't give you flood insurance. And I was like, okay. And then she still hadn't, we still was flooding around because she had put it in Aleem Kadira El Bay. That's not our name. That's both of us. <laughs> okay. I was like, ma'am, it's one. I just wanted in his name. You see what I'm saying? So it just was a whole bunch of flooding around. Long story short, I let it go. And then the house floods. The first try succeeds. I have told you that for many years, I have written psychological reports for business and in industry, helping select new employees or determining if and when an employee should be promoted or fired. One human engineer firm, oh, Ali wants to add on. Yeah, but what she did not also mention was the fact is that during that same time, she told me to get all my books. That yeah. if you want my books, you better pack them up. Now. I woke up. I woke up that morning and I was like stressed out, and I was like, "Ali, if you want your books, you better get them." And I didn't know it was going to flood, and it was definitely going to tear up. I'm glad you remember that. Right. So that was the astral helpers, the ancestors telling her. Even though she was stressed out, she was able to get it through the dream world because that's when you all relax, it's in the dream state. Um, and so she woke up, told me that morning, and what did I do? Because I listened, I put, I packed up my books. So majority of my books, the vast majority of my books were saved. Yeah. Now my iPad, which was traded, <laughs> wasn't. Yeah. But um, let me see. One human engineer firm. Well, you that might I, be able to open it and it can still be saved because look, they had the um, thing from. Um, I had ended up putting it in the um in the sidewall at Mom's house, and the heat made it swell and broke it. The um the little yeah, but that's still not the little. Um, oh okay. Thing, yeah. I see what you're saying. Okay, let's try that. Eileen was saying we probably could still save the information on there, which I want to because that's when when we went to Mexico. Mexico. 
the um the Mayan there acknowledged that we were the Olmecs right, and that our ancestors built the Chichen Itza and the pyramids and you know he was like something happened eight years ago that told me to tell the truth sure. yeah and so that was the, deep in which that was the election of President Barack Obama um, and he said and this was 2012 and he said something happened four years ago which was 2008 in which that of course I said yeah President Barack Obama becoming president Barack Obama becoming president, and he just smiled, and he proceeded on saying that he, as a Mayan, he would tell us the truth, that the Omex was Nubian Egyptians, and being Nubian Egyptians is that, um, that they came here over 5,000 years ago, you know, and of course, in this book in which that my wife is reading, um, they speak of the Mayan Omex connection, in which that he dates it back over one he dates it back over 10,000 years ago. And they should know. He said if we, they had tightly coiled hair, broad noses, and thick, sexy lips. Okay. I have told you that for many years I have written psychological reports for businesses and industries helping select new employees or determine if and when an employee should be promoted or fired. Well, one human engineer firm that I had helped out for 25 years is located in Chicago. Recently, they hired a new secretary, and many of my reports had to be telephoned in for they are always in a hurry. The new secretary got interested in how I operate. My extra helpers do all the legwork for me, telling me about all the persons that are in question. She wanted to try astral projection, so I told her how over the phone to do it. She carried out the proper formula before she went to sleep. I told her that Norma Jean and Jackie would come to her at about 3 in the morning, Chicago time, and bring her to my home in Ann Harbor. Please remember that I have never seen this girl. Her name is Doris. Her astral body arrived at 3 in the morning, and I saw her just as clear as day. She looked very much like Donna Shore. She had reddish brown hair, neck length hair, and blue hazel eyes. She's 5'6", tall, and weighs 120 pounds. I called Doris on the phone the next day and described what I saw. Each detail was 100% correct, even to the 120 pounds, even to the blue hazel eyes. How can you have that? She says that her eyes do look blue sometimes, and sometimes they look hazel. <laughs> okay. Doris told me that she felt wonderful. It appears that she had been suffering from a pain in her neck and shoulders for several weeks that had made her nervous and tense. Now the pain is gone and she's very relaxed. Evidently, one of my astral helpers, I bet it was Phyllis, realized that she needed help to overcome a few physical pains and aches and solve the problem for her without being requested to do so. I woke up with I woke up with a start recently. Okay, I think I had skipped something. Everyone likes to likes to play detective. Okay, security plan. Everyone likes to play sincerely. Surely started talking about Okay, everyone likes to play detective. Surely the thought has crossed your mind by now that the law enforcement agencies are greatly in need of astral helpers. The crime rate seems only to be going up. The mistake that the court makes are truly a disgrace. Did you ever stop to consider how many people are in prison today for crimes that they did not commit? I often wonder how many persons have been executed for crimes that they didn't commit. He received a failed trial, they say. A few personal experiences. Did I read that? Yeah. I find that I just must stop and tell you a few. Okay, okay, well, then that was right. Sorry, y'all. A neighborhood incident. I woke up with a start recently. This suddenly awakened was caused by a loud thump next door to our apartment. It was about 3 in the morning, which that's a high magic time. I asked my spirit guide what happened. Virginia said that the woman next door kicked her husband out of the bed. The man is about 6'6", and he weighs about 250 pounds. His wife is also a very large woman. Why did she kick him out of the bed, I asked. T to put meaning into her answer, I will need to tell you that this couple had a three-year-old child. They called him Chim. The father plays with the child consistently when he's home, running, jumping, throwing balls. Apparently, he wants to make an athlete out of his son. Virginia told me that his wife shouted at the top of her voice she must be getting tired of her husband overdoing the father role. One evening, when this man was 
making an unusual amount of noise, I asked Hazel, another one of my astral helpers, to do something to stop the noise. Hazel knocked a few dishes off of their dining room table and broke them. Their apartment became deadly quiet and stayed that way all evening. I understand they told other neighbors that they could not understand how those dishes could just fly off the table and break into a thousand pieces. I do not advocate being too noisy or destructive about your neighbors, but you surely can find out what is going on if you want to. Get going, boy. One morning, my spirit guide, Virginia, nearly knocked me out of the bed and told me to get up at once. It was wash day, and my duty was to adjourn to the basement and to do the weekly wash. At the time of this rude awakening, I didn't understand the reasons, for I had all morning to do this work. Well, at 8.20 in the morning, I was in the basement doing my duty when it came another couple with a huge load of clothes. It looked very much like they had waited until everything they owned was dirty. They would have tied up the washers and dryers all morning, or perhaps longer. Then the big light lit up. I realized why Virginia had jolted me to get up out of the bed. She knew that the couple would be there early and hold me up. If I did not get out of the bed, I would have been there all day. And that's deep, because I remember... We used to sleep late and we had our store and grandpa had woke me up and he was like get up open the store and that's what I did and then we had we made a lot of money that day and um, customers came early my master's teacher said he is lying several months ago we were listening to the television at the time when President Richard Nixon went before the American people to tell them that he had nothing to do with the Watergate affair all of you remember that night. I did. I have told you that one of my master teachers comes in every evening and sits in the living room. He sometimes takes part in the conversation. When it becomes evident that Nixon was proclaiming his innocence, George, my master teacher, said he is lying. George then proceeds to tell us the true facts, which you all know now. Many people expect as much, but Nixon had his loyal group who believed him. I suggest that when you listen to a political speech, you have to have an astral helper evaluate the truth between the lies. Shopping a store. Do you know what shopping a store means? Since the majority of people do not know the meaning of a business expression, I'll tell you. All stores have problems with dishonest clerks, supervisors, and managers, as well as shoplifters. There are business organizations that send shoppers into stores to observe the clerks, the cashiers, and the others. They actually buy things. I know one organization that has a large warehouse in Columbus, Ohio, where the shoppers leave the goods to be returned to the various stores. When dishonesty is spotted, a report is made and an interviewer is sent to solve the problems. There are two options, getting a confession and having the person repay the amount that was stolen or turning the piece of people over to the police. The best shoppers organizations prefer the first option. In this case, the person may not even lose their job, but must repay what was stolen. The major problem is to find out how much was stolen. I have helped solve this problem many, many times. I simply sent on the, sent in on the interview. The person is questioning concern, concerning their dishonest activities. Various amounts are mentioned, and my astral helpers can easily tell whether or not the person is lying or telling the truth. I will just give one illustration that comes to my mind at the moment. The head of the meat department of the supermarket was being questioned about the sum of money that had been stolen over a period of 10 years. He would admit to only a few nickels and dimes and stated that the sums could not possibly exceed over 10 years $100. I signaled to the interviewer to keep raising the amount until I gave him the signal to stop. The question was, did you steal as much as $100? The answer was yes. Did you steal as much as a $500? The answer was no. And that was a lie. The question was repeated over and over again until the sum was reached to $37,000 worth of money that had been stolen. Above that amount, his answer was no, was the truth, according to my astral helper. This man finally signed a note in order a promissory note in order to pay back all thirty-seven thousand dollars. His other option was to go to jail. He preferred to pay the money back. <laughs> Although he had to sell his home 
in order to do this. I do not believe that I need to tell you how grateful top management was to get this case solved. It was difficult for them to believe that the total amount stolen was so large. Astral helpers may be more useful than they were on the earthly plane. And that's deep because I remember when Eileen was working at the um, a gas station, and it was like 10 years ago, no, it was 17 years ago, and they were stealing in there too. And I remember the lady was so hurt that her dogs were missing. And she came to the work upset, and she was like just talking to Eileen, like, my dogs are missing. So Eileen went to a meditation. He was like, okay, well, one is going to come back on his own, but the other one, the neighbor's going to bring back. And she was like, that's not true. But when it happened within two weeks, if the dog came back on his own, then the neighbor brought the other one back. She had been fired Eileen because it was in there stealing. They had been fired him. Astra helpers may be more useful than they were on the earthly plane. Can you possibly imagine how wrong it is to believe that because a person has departed to the spiritual side of life, that he or she can be no further service to earthly people? In most cases, this value to us has increased tenfold. They can be many things that cannot possibly have done while living on the earthly plane. The most important point to remember is that your astral helpers love to help you. They want to maintain contact with the earth. Unfortunately, the majority of the people wrongly believe that these departed souls are gone forever. Unfortunately, the majority of our people do too, because they say stuff like, let the dead, dead bury the dead. You know, but it would be powerful that if you could tap into the love and the energy that your grandparents have for you, or maybe, you know, the, the um, early fallen and slain brothers, sisters, cousins, that would be powerful. And that's why we're doing this, in order to encourage a development with the spiritual plane. And it's true, um, real simple. Um, my cousin Tim got killed during a robbery. He was robbing, you know, uh, an individual who ended up killing him. So I have my altar. I had this picture on my altar. And I would go to my altar several times out the day. One of the astral helpers' ancestors came and took me in out of my body, of course I was asleep, asked to travel, and we went to his um, inauguration um, into the ancestral plane, and in African religion, tradition, they state that um, you have dead ancestors, and you have um, dead relatives and living ancestors. The difference is that the dead relatives don't know um, that they have any quality of life as far as after this worldly plane. They don't know anything. They don't have any guidance. They don't know what to do. A living ancestor is one who is trained and taught by the ancestors on the astral plane in order to help guide those who are still part of that line lineage here on the earthly plane so they have a role they have a role that they have to fulfill <clears throat> so my cousin Tim um, it was like a soul train line and I was yelling Tim Tim and the ancestor that was next to me said he can't hear you it was mental and I was like you know then why bring me here you know if he can't hear me well, that was because of me um, thinking about him and pouring libations and those types of things. We was able to graduate him from a dead and um, from a dead relative state to a living ancestral state. And so they gave me the ability in order to see his graduation. And so it was like a soul train line with ancestors dressed in garb, African garb and different other um, indigenous wear. And he was coming up the middle and he had his garb in his hand, but he didn't, being that he didn't know what was, he didn't know what was going on. It was kind of bewildering to him. And so this is where we see the difference between the two of what we're talking about. Of course, he was bewildered. He didn't know what was, was happening, but they was cheering him and 
congratulating him and, you know, just everything. And I was there, you know, almost misty-eyed, even on the astral plane, you know, with tears, you know, saying thank you all for allowing me to see this. You know, so this is really what can happen once you tune yourself in, all right, because I knew Tim, all right, we grew up together. Um, he was basically the same age, so, you know, I knew his heart. And, he, you know, whatever he got into, you know, that was some, something in which that was not even his character. So because we was able to go to um, the ancestors, you know, and put forth that energy so that he can graduate, he did. That was deep because um, he also came two days before Eileen um, had the cavernoma. I'm like, man, you need to clean out. You need to clean out, man. You need to detox. And um, and then Eileen sprayed herself in the face with a flea barber and they had a situation. But that's deep. Um, and y'all probably also have experiences too. And that's what this is all about. We want to enhance the solutions so we can have these problems fixed. So I want to read this part again. It says, um, the most important point to remember is that your ancestral and your astral helpers love to help you. Okay? Exactly. They love to help you. They want to maintain contact with the earth. Um, unfortunately, the majority of people wrongly believe that the departed souls are gone forever. Especially us, because we are just so brainwashed into a stagnation so that we can be manipulated economically, physically, and mentally. And it is a hard subliminal lesson to break, you know, but for those who can, and those who have eyes to see, then see. Um, the great scientists, writers, artists, educators, statesmen, and ministers are still available to you and are much easier to contact than they were when they were living on the earthly plane. They have not left the earthly plane in the sense of the word, and don't you forget that. Mary doesn't like me. For several months now, Mary G. has been coming in about every two or three weeks, generally on a Sunday afternoon. Mary lives in Indianapolis, Indiana. She's the wife of a president of a large corporation also in that city. She's an alcoholic and a source of great embarrassment to her husband and daughter, which that's deep because a lot of Caucasian women have um, schizophrenic issues and um, turn to the bottle. There's one child is married and lives in Chicago and she has two children. Mary is a seldomly sober my wife knew her for many years before she moved back to Ann Harbor. In many ways, Mary is very talented and she's interested in opera and is a very fine interior decorator. But her liquor bill is fascinating because they done stole all that money from people and a lot of times their conscience be messing with them. But at any rate, the first time that Mary came in through astral projection, we thought that she was dead. We later found out that she was drunk and that her physical body was sprawled on the living room couch in Indianapolis. I'm looking for someone to tell me the way to hell. I know that I'm going there, but I can't find it. Where is hell? Mm. She knew she deserved to go to hell. Mm. That's deep. So she was going to make one up. Even she, if was it gonna find it. she was going to find it. She was going to find it. Whether she, her, her, her body was ready or not. Hmm? Yes. I assured her that if there were, that if it were, she would, if, wait. I assured her that if that was where she wanted to go, that one of my astral friends would take her straight there. At this point, however, I spotted her silver cord and knew that she had not quite passed to spirit. Mary now started observing some of our spirit friends. She saw Norma Jean and addressed this question directly to her. How the hell did you get here? Norma Jean ignored her question. Mary's dull gray and red aura indicated clearly what kind of person she was. Norma Jean was aware of the fact that Mary had tried to break up her own marriage several years ago. Hmm. 
you did him dirty, said Norma Jean, with great emphasis on each word. You drink too much, and you go to bed with too many men, she continued. You are a fine one to talk about men. How many hundred men did you go to bed with? These two kept on throwing insults at each other. Finally, two of the astral helpers took Mary back home. She immediately woke up and reached for the bottle. The last time that Mary came in, I was enjoying a bowling tournament on television and did not pay any attention to her, although she tried to get my attention over and over again. Later, during my regular meditation period, my spirit guide, Virginia, told me that she talked to Mary. She asked if Norma Jean was still with us. Virginia told her that she was and that Mary Jo, Jackie Susan, and Edgar were also with us. I don't believe it. Don't hand me that load of crap, said Mary. So at this point, all of my noted helpers came in. Mary looked directly at Jackie Susan and said, I never read any of your books. They're trash. Mary asked Virginia if Mildred was still married to that stinker. Virginia informed her that she was and also, and also invited her to stay until the regular meditation period, which was later. Mary refused to stay, saying that she, would, she was leaving because she needed a drink. Our spirit friend Hazel told me that Mary's husband goes on vacation to see her daughter and her family alone. Mary's not allowed to go. Apparently, their daughter avoids the embarrassing situation by keeping away from her own mother. Hazel also told us that Mary had been arrested for drunk driving and that she may as well end up in a fatal car accident someday because they all wished that she was dead. The donors of Mary's aura clearly indicated that she was in poor health. Mary knows nothing about astral projection or any of the other psychic material that you have been reading in this book. It is true that the astral body can and does take off frequently while you are asleep. It could easily take off while a person is dead drunk as well. If I had not developed astral power and established a group of astral helpers, I could never have known that Mary was coming to see us. There are many activities going on all around us right now at this very moment. As a result of reading this book, you can become more and more aware of them. It must be a very sad and disturbing experience for a person who knew you on the earthly plane not to get through to you now that they have gone on to greater things. Perhaps you're sitting in your living room aware of only the emptiness of the house. The, car may, the room may be full of important people for all you to know. Even meeting people like Mary can be a worthwhile experience. Some of you might be asking the question, why don't you cure Mary of her alcoholism? I would have, but my ancestral helpers told me that it would not be. Mary has a karmic debt to pay. Told you she running, stealing from people. Every time she drinks too much or violates her marriage vows, she feels remorseful and mental anguish. All this was reflected in her, asking us to show her the way to heal. She feels that she is very sinful and must be punished. No one can interfere with karma. I might be able to soften the blow and make her marriage a little more livable, but otherwise it's best for her interest to go on the way that she is. Many years ago, during a former life, she set the stage for the type of life that she has now, and now she's forced to live it. God's permissiveness gave her the option. She chose the wrong path, so she was forced to return to earth to settle the account made perhaps several hundred years ago. An orphan, an orphan locates her true parents. Ooh. A few months ago, I read the following article in a Sunday newspaper. Janet Raymond, who is 21, is an orphan. She was born in Los Angeles Hospital during the same period that a well-known movie actress was supposedly had an apodectomy patient. According to sources, her appendix was not removed. A friend of the actress has met Janice and is amazed at the strong resemblance to the star. Ironically, Janet even won a look like contest a few years ago. She was also interviewed on a TV series related to the star. For Janet, however, the resemble is not much help. There's no way she can prove that she is the star's daughter. Janet, who worked as a secretary in Santa Monica Hospital, is a member of the Screens 
Actors Guild and is determined to follow in her mother's path to stardom. This case was easy to solve because Janet's real mother is now on the spirit side of life. Her mother has admitted to me that Janet is her daughter and that her former husband is Janet's father. Her father's life um, still is in San Francisco. Many times it is considered best for an orphan not to know who their real parents are. You have undoubtedly read in the papers of many unfortunate court battles over children. If, however, there is a good reason to locate the mother and perhaps the father, you can help solve this problem. All you have to do is ask one of your astral helpers to find your parents. The date and place of birth will be useful to your spirit helper. Provide your helper with all the information that you can. In most cases, the Akashic Records will provide the answer to this problem. The true need no longer escape you. How often have you heard someone say, I wonder what happened to Mary or why did Jim leave his job? Who do you suppose? Kill that man. I wonder who I really am. Where is my mother now? Did she really steal all that money? I wish I knew where to get hold of a new something or another. They seem so happy together. Why are they getting a divorce? We were recently invited out to dinner. A couple there seemed to be quite devoted to each other. It was a pleasure to spend an evening with them. I never will forget what a wonderful cook the husband was. His turkey dressing was out of this world. On our way home, Norma Jean was with us all evening, and she said there will be a divorce before Christmas. This is not a good marriage. We later got a Christmas card from the wife saying that she was staying with her parents and will be married again in January. But astral helpers aren't valuable. They're priceless. Okay, chapter 10. The fabulous astral ticker tape predicts the future to lead you to greater riches and a happier life. This is chapter, this is page 133. Now that's powerful. Yeah, 133. Since the beginning of time, there has been fortune tellers, mystics, prophets who have claimed that they know the future. Apparently, they were all aware of some kind of psychic power. Many frames of reference were developed by these so-called predictors of the future. Even today, we still have astrology, numerology, palmistry, graphology, crystal balls, and foreniology. Never heard of that, foreniology. I guess that's forensics. The list is long, and the more you try to understand what each one has to offer, the more confusing it could get. Many authorities call these pseudosciences. Man creates his own terrible economy and social problems. Then he spends billions of dollars trying to find out what the future has to offer for him. And most certainly, it is true that we all want to be reassured that we will make it money-wise and occupationally-wise. Although the list is long, I have studied most of these systems, including black magic, witchcraft, rituals, charms, and chants, white magic, and find them all wanting. It is all too evident that many people will try anything that they are led to believe will help them better their future, physical, mental, and emotional lives. Those who claim that they can predict the future never want for clients. At the moment, there seems to be an unusual large number of psychics getting their names in the papers by predicting future events. Some of these prophets are fairly accurate, others are good guessers, many are out and out frauds, and all of these people give you the impression that they have an unusual gift from God that makes all of these things possible. I'm going to prove to you that these predicting is as easy as ABCs and that you can do it too. You don't need any of these future predicting systems. It's high time that people stop throwing their hard-earned money away on most of the predictions and systems advertised today. Even astrology can't hold a candle to this formula. All you need to do is predict your own futures to apply the magic formula, which is rest, concentration, and, and what was contemplation, RCC. You also need to understand the astral concepts of time. Think of what has is and will and happen in the universe as a play goes on. 
you're not only observing the play, but you are also a part of it. Everything that is happening right now, the entire past, present, and future is right now. You can do anything that the greatest prophet can do. You do not need to bow and scrape to any prophet. You do not need to look with awe to a seer or psychic and wish you were like them. You can know yourself and know your future better than anyone else. You are on the inside looking out. You have the edge on a fortune teller or psychic and don't you forget it. You can be your own seer of the future. I surely have made it clear to you over and over again that you are equipped with the highest and most powerful force in the universe. You can become aware of events to come and predict more accurately than the world's famous psychics. You can set in motion the mental action images that will change the future for you and others that are around you. Your help and the helps of thousands like you is needed now. For the future of the earth is up to this. We must all not only better our own futures, but we must help set into motion images that will better the world and pull us out of this present disastrous condition. Because they're going to have to stop killing our husbands and our children. That's going to have to stop. And incarcerating us because they're making all this money with these prison bonds. And this is how they gonna, this is going to stop. We are our own solution. A simple method of ensuring your financial future. I have told you that I write psychological reports for human engineers. These reports help place workers on right jobs. They measure their potential for advancement, and it gives an objective reason for firing an employee. Naturally, like any business, the demands for my work increases and decreases from time to time. The problem is to keep the demand up regardless of business conditions. I now know how to keep that demand up. During my meditation period, I develop a very vivid mental action image of my mailbox being full of materials sent to me by these human engineers. This is the material from which my reports are prepared. I keep repeating this image in my mind, adding a simple sentence to the effects that the image is becoming reality now. Remember God said, let there be light, and there was light. I have repeated this over and over again that all reality starts as a mental image. Within a few days, my report business takes a turn for the better and I'm busy at it again. This method has never failed me in over 25 years, even during business recessions. Mr. E eases his way into retirement. I've been writing reports for Mr. E for many years. I believe that I know and understand him better than he does understand himself. For several years, he's been talking about retiring at the age of 65. He said he wanted to spend more and more time with his children and, and also his grandchildren. He also wanted to write for business journals. Mr. E is so stubborn that when he makes up his mind to do something, no one can convince him otherwise. When you try to change his mind, he becomes very angry and is more convinced than ever that he is right. Many years ago, I learned to cope with his stubbornness. In spite of all his weaknesses, Mr. E did make a significant contribution in bettering relationships between management and labor for a large number of corporations throughout the Midwest. It was my opinion that he should continue doing this, but I do not dare tell him for fear of provoking his stubborn streak. I have mentioned the name of Hazel Shepard before. While on this earthly plane, she was very well-known psychic. Mr. E respected her opinions and gained a great deal of sound advice from her in spite of his stubbornness. Hazel Shepard is now one of my astral helpers. When I talked to Hazel, she agreed with me that Mr. E should not retire this time. We both agreed that his $1,500 a month overhead for an office and secretarial help was too much, but came to the conclusion that Mr. E could ease his way into retirement by moving his office into his home. He could then continue to function at a slower pace. The result of our planning was never mentioned to Mr. E. He was set on giving up the whole business at age 65. I was surprised, however, when I recently received an announcement stating that Mr. E was moving his office to his home, where he would carry on as usual. The only change would be his phone number.
Here's a beautiful illustration of how you can influence others by making use of the ancestral helpers. I'm not advocating that you pull any tricks or illegal or immoral tactics on others or misuse them in any way. However, there's no question that if you plan every detail of the change that you wish to make in a husband, wife, friend, business associate, or politician, etc. is life, you can lead them down a path that will make for a better life for all that are concerned. After the change is made, ask them why they changed. They'll not be able to give you a good reason. Programming others to do your bidding. If those who have passed the spirit cannot keep in touch with each people, with earth people and influence them, there will be no point in every human being on the face of the earth having a spirit guide. Very few people are aware of the fact that their God is even with them from birth to death. God would, per not, would not permit this involvement of billions of spirits if some values were not forthcoming. In England, they call spirits guides or doorkeepers who guard souls and keep them from harm. They do not always succeed, which is very evident, but the service is worthwhile overall. Your spirit guide or other astral helpers can influence or actually help not only you, but others as well. You can literally do extensive programming of others' minds so that their mind can be of service to the world. Ray gets his girl. I met Ray on the street a short time ago. When are you going to marry Rose, Ray? I said, opening the conversation. You have been going with Rose for several years now. People are beginning to talk. Honest, Doc is not my fault. I want to marry Mo Rose, but she will not. She won't set a date. I've tried everything that I can think of, and I even dated Louise for a while. And Louise wanted me to marry her, but I just love Rose so much. I told Rose that Louise wanted to marry her. You know what Rose said to me? I bet I could guess. She told you to go ahead and marry Louise, right? Yeah, ain't that something? Ray answered. I can help you get your girl. I said. Uh, it would do no good to talk to her. She would resent your interference. Who said anything about talking to her? Come on to see me tomorrow, and I replied as we parted. After Ray had learned my system, I suggested that he build during his meditation period. Vivid images of Rose finally consenting to marry him and setting the date. I also suggested highly emotional images of both of them enjoying marital love together. His astral helpers did the rest. They put the idea in Rose's head, and before she knew it, she was marrying Ray. They helped her dismiss her fear of marriage. I also suggested to Ray that he start dating Louise again and stop seeing Rose. He was to make it look as if he was going to marry Louise. I assured, now see, that ain't fair. I assured Ray that Louise really understood that he would not be marrying her all okay. However, she did enjoy dating him. They always had a good time together. I worked. It worked. Ray and Rose are now happily married. John gets his promotion. John had been with the same company for 10 years. Since there were top level jobs available there, he believed that there was the best way to advance. Although John got a few raises, he never was considered for a really good promotion in line with his goals. He wanted a job which was more responsible and less purely routine work. John told me his story one day and asked me, what am I going to do wrong? I assured him that his employer would be wrong and not him. I taught John how to use my formula during meditation. I told him to see himself on the job, but he had pictured at his goals. He saw himself succeeding and being appreciated by the management. John also brought in an astral helper who was given the job of influencing the mind of a man who could do the most good when it came to helping John move up. So John wasn't surprised when the man appeared more frequently to observe John and his job. It was not long before the whole process was working beautifully. John got the promotion he needed and wanted. Promising pro um, programming others is an ex exclusive with my formula. I'm giving you only two actual cases of how my ancestral astral helpers can influence others for your benefit. 
Play around with this idea for a while and you will be able to think of hundreds of ways in which your life can be made more productive. Getting people to do what you want them to do is easier than you ever thought possible. You now have a method of increasing your chances of success in getting a job, a wife, money, a family, going on a trip around the world, etc. There are many systems that use positive thinking as a way of changing your life for the better. However, my system is the only one that makes use of your spirit friends, your astral helpers. To make certain that your positive thinking becomes reality, your astral helpers will remove all the blocks to succeed, all the blocks so that you'll be healthy and happy. Your ancestral helpers can influence the thinking and actions of even people in high places. I thought often of writing letters to the President of the United States or other famous people in the public life including actors and actresses. I have still to write the first letter because I realize that the important person will never see it or never read it. The only way most of us could get into the White House would be to join the groups of conductors, tours of famous homes of presidents. Your astral helpers, however, have no trouble getting anywhere or influencing the thinking and the actions of even important people in high places. So it's not too long ago I helped a man reach his cherished goals. He was an excellent attorney who wanted to become a federal judge. That meant that he would need to be recommended by the President of the United States. Mr. W asked for and received my help. The, the presentment that Mr. W prepared included the complete story of his life, his educational experiences, his important, his important cases that were successfully handled, family, letters of recommendation, etc. Naturally, political party endorsements were included as well as letters from well-known people on the political scene. It surely was an impressive package for the president to review. Mr. W even managed to arrange, to arrange a very brief presidential interview with the president. After Mr. W learned my system, he developed vivid images of himself on the job, carrying out all the duties of his judgment successfully and with great emotional satisfaction. He literally lived these images during his meditation period. What could an astral helper do? There were several actually qualified men seeking the job. Which one would the president recommend? I should like to make it clear right now that with my system, there is no need for dirty tricks or any other shady political devices. The astral helpers do not ever need to refer to any of the other candidates or make any comparisons. All persons on the spirit side of the life have awareness of many things. Astro Helper's radar comes into play. It is more all-inclusive than ESP. The higher the spirit development, the more extensive the radar system becomes. It goes without saying that all of our spirit friends do not want to be aware of everything in the universe or everything on the earthly plane. They program themselves to pick up what they need and pick up what they want. Let me give you two very special illustrations of this technique. When I start working on this book, I prepare reports of human engineers, at least two and sometimes three of my ancestor helpers come in and identify themselves so that I know that they're there helping me. Two of my astral helpers are Japanese. One is very beautiful whom I have known over several lifetimes. The other is a Japanese exorcist. He's very talented and speaks 17 languages. Our association is quite a long story, but let me illustrate Astro Radar with just one episode. Santanyo, the Japanese girl, approached me one day and attracted my attention, although I was not in a meditation situation. She said that there was danger from evil forces. She told us that she brought Trikyo, the Japanese exorcist, with her. Both of these spirits were in the Japanese area where they detected evil forces around us in Anne Harbor. Santio had her radar program to pick up evil forces around us. They were probably just one of the many situations that she was aware of as far as we were concerned. Santio comes to see us frequently and is always on call when needed. Trikyo set a trap. The evil forces was caught and permanently removed. We were grateful. Now, let me return 
to my story about Mr. W, the astral helpers that were working on his project to get him to the President of the United States to endorse him to adjust his radar so that they knew when the president was considering each candidate for the job. At the proper time, the Astro Helpers brought up a pleasant, comfortable time. This is one for the job. Emotional tones within the president as he reviewed the qualifications of Mr. W. The Astro Helpers made Mr. W's good points stand out in the president's mind. When the time came to make a decision, the president had just one person in mind. It was Mr. W. Mr. W is now a federal judge, a position that he will hold with honor until it comes time for him to retire. He will be a good judge, by the way. The Fabulous Astral Ticker Tape. I have told you that everything is happening now. The Astral Ticker Tape has a complete record for every event. Comparing the ticker tape you see in your stockbroker's office with the astral ticker tape is like comparing a computer with the human brain. There is really no comparison. For the astral ticker tape tells you the whole story, not just the past and the present. The astral ticker tape will give you the answer at any point. The astral ticker tape tells you how the event ended before it started. Think what this means if you like to bet on horses or football games. All that your astral helper has to do is tell you how the race ended at the time you placed your bet. You can't lose. It's best for you to let your astral helpers read the ticker tape. I have seen all forms of astral records and must tell you that they are not easy to read. Edgar Casey could do it, but his radar while in hypnotic trance was all inclusive. He could really read out of the big book of the astral plane and Akashic records. For you, it will be better to do so, depending on your astral helpers. All astral records, including the ticker tape, go far beyond anything that you'll be able to find on Earth. Does this mean that nothing can be changed? For such events as horse racing, the majority of athletic contests and elections, the answer is yes. However, if you do not like what astral records say is going to happen to you next week or next year, can change it through the full application of the magic formula RCC. Jim makes a bundle at the right at the racetrack. Betting on horses really made Jim it really had Jim by the tail. Fortunately he didn't lose too much. He did win much he didn't win much either until I sold him on this system. Learning my magic formula was also a lucky break for him for another reason. For his boss was ready to fire him. He quit his job and is now making a good living at the racetrack. I got Jim an astral helper who, while on the earth plane, also liked to bet on horses. Now on the astral plane, he still likes to watch the races. He can easily find out how they'll end before they start. He welcomed the opportunity to help Jim make a good living at the racetrack. Jim can now travel to many parts of the country and the world too. What he needs is money. He just heads straight to the racetrack. Many people ask Jim how he does it. He's not wise enough to tell him for the majority would think that he's kind of nuts. He has been advised to write a book about this system, but Jim just shakes his head and tells them that he's satisfied the way things are right now. Who can blame him? Gloria wins on a TV show. When people ask Gloria why she's so lucky on TV game shows, she just tells them that she listens to her inner voice. The answer it generally gets from others is that when they listen to their inner voice, they generally lose. What her friends don't know is that her inner voice is an astral helper who puts the correct answers into her mind. The master of ceremonies of one game shows us greatly surprised when she won $25,000. Now warning, do not misuse the power of knowing the future. It is fine for you to win at races, games, and contests, but do not overdo this. Take your fair share and then go on to something else. To not heed this warning may result in you losing the ability to use your astral powers. Arthur changes his future. Arthur did not like what the astral helpers told him about his future, so he made up his mind to change it. The invention of a new machine that he knew nothing about would do anyway with his job, do away with his job. His astral helpers told him the type of training that he would need to get an even better job when the machine was finally introduced. He met his challenge. 
and is now a skilled inspector of a machine that could have put him out of job. Real estate development made easy. John is a real estate developer. He came to see me one day wondering whether or not I had suggestions that might improve his lot in this field. I taught him my system. He would drive out to a proposed land development site, sit in his car, and apply my magic formula. First, he would get a clear image of the area in his head. He really concentrated on this until he had a very strong image. He would then ask his astral helpers to put a picture in his mind of the same area five, ten, or more years later. His astral helpers, after consulting the astral ticker tape, would project the picture of the area that John believed would make a good housing and or business development project. To John's surprise, he would not only was correct, he, some areas would show little or no development. In others, the development was of different, of different sort. Some development faster or slower than John would have thought possible. The greatest value of this use of astral ticker tape concerns development. There were areas where vast sums of money were to be invested, resulting in a possible total loss years later. Do I need to add that John is now a millionaire land developer? Wow. Becoming knowledgeable of the future ensures successful living. There are people who do not want to know anything about their future. They want only to live each day as they find it and to be surprised when they wake up tomorrow. They want to take their chances with the future. This book is not for such, he says, really stupid people. You come back to earth playing for a purpose. The great majority do not even know what they came back for, and that's the truth. Many believe that this is the first and only trip to the earth, but yet they'll say that children are old souls and been here before. You are not only of the stupid ones, or you would not be reading my book. Knowing the future is a must. There are many ways that you can use the astral ticker tape, and listening to your inner self is a must. And connecting with your ancestors that have passed is a must. It's a must for us. You can find out about your past trips to Earth. You can become knowledgeable about your mistakes and the things that you did right. You can learn why you come back and whether or not you are making any progress in fulfilling your mission. You can know what the immediate future will be. Um, and if you want to play the horses, you can pick the winners with great ease. You can learn what the long-range future has in store for you. If you don't like what you find out, you can change it and become anything your heart desires. You can learn the future of your city, state, or nation. And through the democratic system, help change the future for others as well as yourself. I did not like it when I found out that I was to pass to spirit on February the 20th, 1972. If I had not learned this fact, I would not be sitting at my desk writing this book. I have greatly enjoyed my life since then and expect to enjoy many more years. Inger Steven is with me now. She's telling me that if she had known me and my work, she would still be on earth. At the moment she took her life, she seems to be the thing to do. That seemed to be the thing to do at the time. She is now deeply sorry that she's that she committed suicide, but is grateful for the opportunity of helping me bring a more perfect earthly life to thousands. The future is yours to make it. What will you do? All right, peace, y'all. Um, Till next time.